come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. We're a podcast that's been called a book club for movies, and we watch a movie every Saturday that we talk about it for your listening pleasure. These are the internet radio superstars. Michaela. Holly. And I'm Colin. Aw. Oh, no. Oh, <laughs> we're missing Sean, someone. <laughs> <laughs> Colin just looked longingly at the empty seat where Sean should yeah. be. <laughs> the empty microphone. Uh, well, before we get into this, we want to tell you where you can find us online. Join the Freak Show family. Comment about this movie or any of our previous episodes. Let us know how we're doing. You can find us on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. On Twitter. At Set Freak Show. You can find us, or you can email us. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Or on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. Um, so, tonight, we watched a movie that was chosen by... Holly, what did we watch tonight? We, uh, well, we went on a journey that none of us had taken before, and we watched a movie called Malone. Malone, from Malone, the year... 1987. And directed by Harley Coakless, who we would know from. Sounds like a fake name. It does sound <laughs> like a fake name. Um, he did some work on Xena, Warrior Princess, and the TV show Hercules. Um, uh, his most That's imp- the top of his list. His huh? most impressive work was that he was the second unit director on Empire Strikes Back. Ah, uh, there. <laughs> okay, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I was like, that's uh, that's pretty cool. And that's he directed the Deathless '80s classic Battle Truck. I'm kidding. I've never seen it, but <laughs> with a title like that, that's like, man, we got to check this out at some point. Battle truck in the future when trucks go. No, I don't know. <laughs> Did you uh, actually look it up? I looked it up. It's uh, some kind of po- post-apocalyptic movie. Yeah. Where people drive. Battle Did you watch trucks. the trailer? Ooh, it sounds like a Mad no, Max knockoff. <laughs> I was going to say he did rad, but he didn't, did he? That mm-hmm. was Hal Needham. Hal yeah. Needham was the roommate of this movie's star. Who starred in this movie? Uh, Burt Reynolds' mustache. And that, no, that, I'm sorry, Burt Reynolds' wig. <laughs> <laughs> His oh wiggy, my God, wiggy, that wig. wiggy wig, yeah. Holy cow. <laughs> so then I'm like, did this man ever have hair? Because it's like a helmet. Yeah, it yeah. doesn't move. It has a reflection to it, too. The yeah. F- the funny thing is, is you guys were talking about how fake it is, and all I could think was, his hair looks exactly like my dad's, and my dad's hair is very <laughs> real. <laughs> it was just amazing. Well, that was not a personal slight against your dad, Holly. No, 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 no. No, it's fine. It's fine. But hair like that does exist. <laughs> no, I just want to... I've seen it. I've seen it in person. It's real. <laughs> and now we've seen the artificial version yeah. in this one. So, like, when did Burt Reynolds lose his hair? All right, so wait a second. You got to back this up. We got to yeah. we got to talk about. It. So Burt Reynolds. Yeah. How did we come to choose this movie for tonight's uh, mo- uh, show? Well, Colin, you showed me a trailer, <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, "How awesome does this movie look? We have to watch this." And I was like, "You know what? Fuck it. I'll pick it." <laughs> so it's all my fault. It movie. is your fault. It's absolutely your fault. The no, trailer no. for this I'm gonna movie. Say it's, I'm going to say it is the fault of the master who made this trailer. <laughs> because he made this movie look spectacular. <laughs> I know. It looked like, yeah. uh, you know, what the line of, you know, it's like, I can't, you know, the, the him and uh, Burt Reynolds and Lauren Hutton are mm-hmm. like in bed. Yeah. And, you know, like. I came to kill you. He just turns around. I know. (laughs) And then you got, you know, him like blasting guys away with a shotgun. Mm -hmm. He's roaring around in his black (laughs) Mustang and shit's exploding behind him and he's walking away from it. You're like, oh, my God, this looks like the greatest movie ever made. It looked awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So trailer editors, uh, whoever cut this one. You, sir. You, sir. You <laughs> were the, the star of this. <laughs> you were the star of this film. <laughs> well, so, uh, well, the reason that I had looked up the trailer for this is, um, well, Burt Reynolds, you know, as everybody uh, knows, passed away last year in 2018. May he rest. And I realized that, like, I am not familiar, really, with the uh, the films of Burt Reynolds. You know what? No, we we briefly talked about this before. I don't think any of us really are. Like, you think that you are? Mm-hmm. You think, like, oh, Burt Reynolds, yeah. Name something besides Smoking the Bandit and mm-hmm. maybe, like, what, striptease? Like, right. yeah. Cannonball it's, Run. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, like, a later, few, but... later there's stuff like Boogie Nights, which he was sure. nominated for yeah. an Oscar and, and stuff. But, but, I mean, really. I think you're more familiar with, like, the... 
the meme that he's beca- like he's become like a personality bigger than himself you know yeah. like he's been like he's a caricature he's, of himself he's now a right figure. he's yeah. not a movie star oh deliverance yeah oh, well deliverance, deliverance. Okay. yeah sure there. a movie that i fucking hate i hate that movie really i do oh man deliverance is a good movie i hate that movie well, to each his own. It's a good movie, but I don't know if it's a if if, if it's a, like it's not a watchable, watchable movie. movie. Yeah. yeah, it's not a it's not something you feel like. Ah, I really want to sit down and watch Deliverance right now. If oh, I that's feel true, that, way. Yeah. yeah, no. If I met someone that was like, you know what, fuck, I really want to watch Deliverance, I'd be like, what the <laughs> fuck? It's like the re- it's like Requiem for a Dream, great movie. Don't really want to watch it yeah. all the time. You it know? is yeah. definitely worth checking out if you haven't seen it. But mm-hmm. is it a? It's know, an you, experience. Yeah, you don't throw it in every year. It's not one no, of those kind of things. No, it will still stay with you. You don't need to watch it every. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but you're saying that he, you know, became like a personality. I think he always was. See, this is the the thing. There's like Burt Reynolds is a legendary Hollywood personality. He is, yeah, absolutely timeless, absolutely, yeah. And but we sit there going like, but what have we seen that he's? I mean, the Smokey and the Bandit so huge mm-hmm. that it, you know, you know, made him. Yeah. Well, I mean, I suppose, you know, when you go back and look at his career, he started off in uh, TV shows and Westerns and whatnot, and then he had some leading roles, because we watched mm-hmm. the trailer for Navajo Joe and stuff like that that was made like in White the light, late White 60s. Lightning and Gator. Gator, yeah. yes. Which, who knew that that's a sequel to White Lightning yeah. with uh, Gator McQuaid or whatever the fuck his name was. But I, I, you know, we watched those trailers and, you know, White Lightning and Gator looked like a lot of fun, but... I think it'd be the same exact That's situation possible, yeah. as yeah. tonight. I think it'd be the exact same. Yeah, a really good trailer good editor. Trailers. He yeah, was he true. was a director. Mm-hmm. No, director. that was the that was funny. <laughs> that, that was, was funny. <laughs> that, talk about genius trailers. Oh, holy shit! Funny. The trailer for Gators got to be one of the best trailers I've ever that seen. That was ever. fantastic. Wow. Colin, can you can you sum up what we're talking about? I think they just had that more fun w- w- making trailers back then. Yeah, it's like hi, I'm Burt Reynolds, and I made my first directorial uh, debut with this movie Gator. I wanted to avoid sex, violence, car ch- needless car chases. You know, as they're showing you as all they're this showing. Stuff. Yeah. But United Artists didn't want to make that movie, so we made Gator. <laughs> <laughs> that was hilarious. But it's like two minutes of him doing it. They yeah. build up oh, to that. It's great. Yeah, it's great. It was great. We kind of want to see it. So, like, he's an action <laughs> star then. I mean, he did a bunch of action y type uh, roles prior to his big breakout hit of uh, Deliverance. Mm-hmm. And. You know, I think, see, this is the thing, like, I think the cult of personality that Hollywood stars had, like, in the 70s, I mean, like, well, I can't uh, uh, undersell how huge Burt Reynolds was in the public consciousness in the late 70s, or maybe, yeah, late 70s into the early 80s. I mean, because back then... Like, uh, these guys were on talk shows and they were on like Hollywood squares and they just show up kind of on, on, uh, the Johnny Carson show mm-hmm. or the, you know, and they were just seemed to be, seemed to be like omnipresent. And yeah. it, when you go into the supermarket and the tabloids, it was all him and Lonnie Anderson. Right. And it's all Burt Reynolds, Burt Reynolds, Burt Reynolds. And then sometime in the eighties, this was a big thing. I don't know if you guys remember this. There was a rumor that he had been diagnosed with AIDS and was dying with AIDS. And that was in like the oh, National wow. Enquirer. Like it was a serious, like everybody thought Burt Reynolds had AIDS because he had lost a lot of weight and he just kind of wasn't looking like mm-hmm. the bandit mm-hmm. anymore. Mm-hmm. And I think his, uh, his movie fortunes had started to kind of taper off into the mm-hmm. mid, uh, into the mid eighties after smoking the bandit. I mean, he did, uh, uh, um, the cannonball run movies. Yeah. There's like at least another smoking the bandit movie. There's three smoking the bandit movies, but I think he's, he's, on, he's only the first two. Yeah. We well, shows up at the end of the third one. Spoiler. Well, yeah. Well. Uh, <laughs> there's two cannonball run. I think mm-hmm. that he's in and his, uh, roommate was a guy named Hal Needham mm-hmm. who was, I think the, the highest paid stunt man, that has at least until that time had ever lived. Mm-hmm. It was funny. I was watching a documentary on the Smoking the Bandit disc, and it was about like Burt Reynolds and Hal Needham, mm-hmm. and how like basically Hal Needham wanted to be a movie star like Burt Reynolds, and Burt Reynolds wanted to be a stunt man like <laughs> Hal Needham. And so Burt Reynolds actually turned down once, you know, I mean, it was because he, uh, Hal Needham was his friend. He got him, you know, the, mm-hmm. the, the, to do Smoking the Bandit. And then that kind of gave Needham a, a director uh, a career. Mm-hmm. And so then Burt Reynolds would turn down bigger things so he could be in Hal Needham movies. 
And so I think that's how we got like stroke or ace, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and now, stuff like that. Now, when you say that they were roommates, I assume you mean that this was before Burt Reynolds was like a big star. No, that when he was a big star, they had like a bachelor pad. Okay. This was the, the flop the, house. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It was All the right. stabbing cabin that they had. Yeah. yeah. Uh, until Burt Reynolds got married, I, I assume that was Lonnie Anderson. That I think, probably helped sure. fuel the the AIDS rumors, you know. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Back <laughs> this then, this is my roommate. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> And then they went their separate ways. And Hal Needham made uh, a movie called Megaforce. Oh, yeah. Which okay. I'm shocked now that Burt Reynolds wasn't in it. It was Barry Bostwick, who is not really a Burt Reynolds, uh, you know, yeah. No, he's famous for one thing, right? Rocky yeah. Horror, and that's it. And the Spin City TV show? He was on that? He was the mayor? Well, I, think no, I, didn't, I didn't no idea. But he's a comedian. You know, he's yeah. seen as a comedian. But I think in Megaforce, it's like a serious deal, right. like in the future. <laughs> These guys ride around on motorcycles. Yeah. Mega fours. Can't wait to see that one. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I remember there was like Best Little Whorehouse in Texas. I think, oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. Right. I forgot about that. That may have been. There's Hooper. Right. In the Hooper oh, before. Yep. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Best Little Whorehouse in Texas in 84 might be like at the end of the, you know, it's, bankable yeah, Burt Reynolds yeah. era. Yeah, it's been a long time since I saw that, but I think I liked it. I think. I mean, people seem to have yeah. fond remembrances of it, so. I feel like I liked it, but I like Dolly Parton. So. Yeah. Yeah. And he had, I think, a um, kind of a competitive thing going with Clint Eastwood. Because Clint Eastwood did like Dirty Harry, and so then... Burt Reynolds did Sharky's Machine. Comparable. <laughs> yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. Definitely the same. Have you guys seen Sharky's Machine? Nope. I want to see this. So you're saying it was no contest, is what you're saying. I think he was trying to do his dirty Harry. It's like Burt yeah. Reynolds wanted to get out of a car and be like a you know serious Every movie he does, he gets out of a car. <laughs> it's like in his contract. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, you know what I'm saying. Like, instead of doing racing movies or whatever where he's driving, yeah. we're going to do movies where he doesn't have to be, you know, like uh, in uh, in a racing yeah. kind of movie. And he did City Heat with uh, with uh, Clint Eastwood, which was some kind of period uh, comedy thing. A period comedy? Yeah. Clint like Eastwood, Burt Reynolds, and a period comedy. Oh, yeah. City Heat. My God. Sounds awful. You don't know about this? No. I <laughs> sounds really bad. <laughs> it doesn't sound real. I know. I think comedy when I think Clint Eastwood. Have you yeah. not seen Any Which Way But Loose? <laughs> I no. have, but there's a monkey in that movie, so Any it's which different. Way you can? Yeah, there's monkeys in those movies. It's different. Yeah. <laughs> That's where the comedy comes in, is with the monkey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That's why I'm thinking you need to dig a little deeper into the Clint Eastwood stuff, too, because you're going to find shit like Honky Tonk Man that you go... Huh. Really? Clint Eastwood <laughs> is a country singer. He's a honky tonk me sings. He should oh, yeah. start doing more stuff like that now instead of all this these same like <laughs> dramatic oh, historical. I don't, I don't think he should do anything now. <laughs> I think he's <laughs> But nothing's gonna stop I him, Holly. He's, he's gonna keep he's doing spent. it. We just did the yeah. mule. He I know. came back yeah. and did the mule. I was surprised because didn't he quit after Grand Torino? Was that, I'm done acting, I'm just gonna direct. That's what I thought. Mm-hmm. No. Then came yeah. the mule. That's what I'm saying he's not gonna stop. He's never gonna retire. He's gonna go until he dies. So yeah. if he's gonna do it, I he might so. as well mix it up a little bit. Yeah. I hope he just keeps on trucking. That's going to keep I him mean, alive. Just know, keep working, God, Clint. God bless him. Yeah. And his hot son. God bless his hot son. <laughs> his son looks just like his it's dad weird. did when he was uh, yeah. that age. It's yeah. freaky weird. Too bad he has no attractive. screen presence. Yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, too, bad he's, too bad he's practically invisible. <laughs> yeah. He was in a Western, too, I think. Uh, like, you know, of course. You, you know what? I, for all I know, you're Colin, that's entirely yeah, possible. I like be- I said, wouldn't know I would it. I would believe yeah. anything you said <laughs> yeah. about him right yeah. now. Well, like, he was yeah, in Suicide sure. Squad. You saw yeah. him in Suicide Squad. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 And something else. He was, um, wasn't was he in the new Fast and the Furious movie? He's, his probably. Char- his character is replacing Paul Walker. But he's, Get out. He's moving into Paul Walker's like, no. role. In, uh, yeah. He's not replacing that character. He's yeah. moving into that similar role in the family. I don't know anything about that, but that makes sense. Too. Yeah. Wow. Scott Eastwood is I, in those I movies and is entirely forgettable. Wow. So that's why they're spinning off the... Uh, well, that's Hobbs and Shaw. Hobbs and Shaw. This movies, is a terrible yeah. fucking name for a movie. Holy shit. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I got fooled by that trailer, though. 
I got fooled by the Hobbs and Shaw trailer because they showed Idris Elba like fucking shit up as a villain and he had some really cool one liner. I was like, oh, what's this movie? I want to see it. And they cut to the the rock and Jason Statham. And I was like, no, no, god damn it. No, it's a Hobbs and Shaw movie. Uh, but that's fantastic that those movies Hobbs keep on Shaw. going. No. Spin offs and all that stuff, interconnected universes of the Fast and Furious. We deserve better movies than that. That's right. We deserve <laughs> movies like Malone. Am I right? <laughs> No, we don't. We okay. didn't do. We don't no. deserve this. <laughs> we didn't do anything to deserve this movie, Colin. <laughs> All right, so we, we, we'll tell you. We tell tried us. to discover something new, and look what happened. Yeah, you know. <laughs> I know because usually, I guess that's the thing, listener. If uh, if you are just joining us for the first time, usually we do. As uh, one of us at least is bringing a movie to the show that we've seen before, yeah. uh, so it's kind of been vetted. <laughs> it's. I mean, I'm kind of. I don't know. I'm kind of known for bringing shit I've never seen, so... But that's sometimes fun. It's the thrill of discovery. Mm-hmm. I'm like, where else am I going to watch this shit? I'm going to watch it here. Let's yeah. do it, you know? We're all in the exact same playing field yeah. with Malone. First time through. Okay, yeah. so Malone. Who is Malone? Malone. Oh, I, I can I um, can I read the, the first line in the back of the, the case here? Because it's perfect. Um, there's no tagline on the front, but on the back of the case we got... Ex cop, ex CIA, explosive. <laughs> oh. If only that was true. <laughs> he blows stuff up at the end. Things explode. Yeah, there are a couple explosions. We in get this. a shot where he walks calmly away from a wall of fire behind him, which may have been one of the first times that I have, that that had ever actually happened in a movie. Right, 1987. Robert Rodriguez made like a cottage industry out of it with like Desperado. Mm-hmm. I think it was like one of the first. And then like every Robert Robert Rodriguez movies has like people walking in slow motion. You know, I feel like there had to have been a Joel exploded. Silver movie that did it before this. Oh, like yeah. maybe the year, uh, same year or year before, but. I can't even think of what it was, though. I'm like, I'm not seeing that image until I see like Antonio Banderas and Salma Hayek like walking away from you know a wall of fire. And then it's uh, Quentin Tarantino mm-hmm. and uh, and George Clooney. You know, it's like all of his characters eventually do it. Listener, tell us. I'm sure you're yeah. thinking of something we're not thinking of. So please tell us. Yeah. Did Malone set the bar for? Okay. I can't believe. I, know, I, I feel like no one's that. seen this movie. So no. Yeah. No. <laughs> How do we know that uh, Malone, first name unknown, first name? Dick. Richard. Oh yeah, Dick, <laughs> Dick Malone. How do we know that he's a CIA operative? Um, I don't. I, I feel like I missed <laughs> I was gonna that say, part of the movie. I I don't. I don't know. I I picked up early on that he was like an assassin, the sniper. Um, yeah, yeah. I picked that but up. You just can't on, do it anymore. But I really. <laughs> 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 that was the first scene in the movie. Yep. And that's I was like, okay, I, maybe I can get on board with this, but that didn't, doesn't end up meaning anything for the rest of the movie, really. No. Apparently, it's kind of irrelevant scene. Yeah. Apparently, he's an ex cop. I don't know where that came into play. I'm, I feel like I missed that. Yeah, poll. I didn't see yeah. that at all. Because yeah. at some point, they run his uh, his dossier or they pull up yeah. you know, the teletype of like, who is this guy? You're supposed to read yeah. it. All. And they like, you know, it's like all his known identities and. I don't fucking know, man. Yeah, he was in Vietnam before the Vietnam War, like, you know, doing covert shit. He's seen stuff is basically what they're getting at. This The whole movie is basically, this is an archetype of a Western, right? And specifically Shane. Yes. Yeah, it is. (laughs) It is. Okay, so what we have here is the gunfighter who is tired of, uh, you know, the life, who's given it up. And in this case, much like Doc Hollywood would do uh, shortly hereafter, his car breaks down in an idyllic little picturesque mountain valley town. Is it a town? It's like it's like one family, right? Mostly. There's well, a gas well, station. I guess they go to town. I mean, there's like a grocery store and there's yeah. a couple other businesses, but it, like they've made it a point to explain that it used to be a flourishing town and... Now this guy's bought it all up and everyone's moved away and mm-hmm. yeah. The damn cattle rancher, the yeah. land baron yeah. who wants the the homesteaders to get off the mm-hmm. land. Yep. It's ironic. I just saw Pale Rider again mm-hmm. recently uh, a couple weeks ago. That's 85, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh it's this is the same setup. I mean, it's oh, like yeah. mm-hmm. the yeah. same setup. We've even got the uh daughter who's too young to be flirting with our yeah. hero. And, you know, God. and of course, so he comes into town, right? He's, he's broken down. His, uh, his car's broken down. Yeah. So, his horse needs water. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. <laughs> and so uh, the kindly uh, 
gas station attendant. Scott Wilson. Herschel. Yeah, from The Walking Dead. Sure. Or you're in cold blood, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or even uh, the doctor in The Exorcist 3, which was on our show. Is Scott Wilson right. on the wall? Uh, Wait, hold on. I believe I you said he, he was when we were watching it, Hallie. No, not Scott Wilson. There was, there's another guy in this that's on the wall. Um, right, so what, what is the wall we're talking about? That is our uh, freak show wall of fame. How do you get on the wall of fame? You have to be... <laughs> it's It's... Kind of loose rules, but basically you have to be in at least three movies that we watch on the show. We have the Wall of Fame, we have the Hallway of Fame for those that yeah. are, maybe don't deserve it, but you yeah. know. But it's, right. it's Stallone's Wall of Fame. Yes. I didn't see, because Stallone, we've covered seven Six or seven times. of his movies. Yeah. Would you be surprised if I told you one, two, three, four, five, six people make it on the Wall of Fame tonight with this movie? Wow. Uh, yes, I would. Uh, wow. <laughs> Would you like me to tell you who? Yeah, I knew I knew at least one did. Okay, because I recognized him. Uh, well, you were saying Tracy Walter, right? Who should be on the wall? Tracy Walter's in this movie as a goon. Who? Uh, yeah, there were there I were. I don't see his name on the. But it seemed what what else had have we seen that he was in? Um, he was just in Super Mario Brothers, wasn't he? Wasn't Perhaps. he? Don't know. Wasn't he one of the goons in that? I can't remember. I'm could not be, familiar I enough with him. That up. All right. But I feel like he was. All right. Well, I'll like tell you, while you're looking that up, I'm going to tell you, uh, the big one is, uh, the one who's actually going on the wall is mm-hmm. Kenneth McMillan. Mm-hmm. Kenneth McMillan played the police officer, the Hawkins, sheriff, yeah. in Malone. He was also, we did the, the Stefford Wives. Mm-hmm. He was the market manager, and he was uh, Baron Von uh, or, or Harkonnen in Dune. Oh, God. Yeah. Right. I forgot we did that movie for a second there. Uh, we got an actor named Frank Turner who played Andy. I don't know who that is, but he uh, was also in Watchers, The Fly 2, and It. Oh, he was uh, he was Al Marsh, Beverly's father in It. Oh, gotcha. Right. He was the uh, barber in Malone. Gotcha. That guy. Uh, Tom Heaton played mm-hmm. Eli. He was also in The Fly 2, It. He was Mr. Keen. Wow, there's a lot of overlap here. And Not just with this movie, but other movies. Slither, yeah. Huh? yeah. Duncan Frazier in Malone as Malone's target was also in The Fly 2 and Time Cop. So all three of those guys are in The Fly 2. That's kind of That's weird. weird. Yeah. What's the connection between The Fly 2 and this movie then? Hmm. I don't know. Don Davis. I didn't even recognize him in the movie, but it says uh, here, uh, thanks to uh, Jason Madsack, who's our historian. Yes. And thank you so much. Keeper. Yeah, for real. He says Don Davis was uh, Buddy in Malone. He was also in Watchers, Hook, Cliffhanger, and Con Air. And Dennis Berkeley, who plays Dan Bollard. You remember him in Malone? Mm-hmm. Dan? Who the Somewhat. fuck? Was- he was Maybe. also in Sidekicks as Hank and Conair. Oh, that's the dude. That's the one I was talking yeah. about. Yeah, okay, the bearded yeah. dude. Yeah. yeah. Thug dude. Okay, yeah. I got you. Yeah. Right. Okay. Wow, this uh, this really yeah. really filling up the wall with this movie, huh? I know, yeah. Um and we're still looking up Tracy. No, Walter. I don't know about this guy. I forget what movies we watch, so I don't know. All right. <laughs> so uh, he comes to stay with the uh, you know the 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 gas station attendant Herschel and his mm-hmm. daughter, mm-hmm. who seems is a Cynthia Gibb, mm-hmm. who you may remember from Short Circuit Two. There you go. Or possibly Young Blood. Or yeah. if you're a fan of Hallmark Christmas movies, <laughs> she's done a plethora. Yeah. <laughs> Who looks uh, prepubescent. That's not true. She looks like she's 19 years old. <laughs> yeah. But like, I don't know. She could probably play anyone from 16 to 19, I would say even. That's true. I don't think oh, yeah. she ever like, she has one of those faces. She just never grows up. Yeah. 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 She never. Yeah. She never ages. Yeah. But. And she fawns all over. Malone. From the jump. Like, from yeah. the at jump. one point she's like I used to be afraid of you and I'm like when the fuck was that never she yeah. like jumped his bones as soon as he got out of the car yeah when she was like I'll steer you push she like yeah. looks back and gives him like fuck me eyes like yeah. right off the jump and that's I was like oh damn this is gonna get uncomfortable and immediately it's, <laughs> and it's so it's so goddamn creepy because she's got that like that like simpleness about her you know like that small town sheltered simpleness yeah mm-hmm. but she's like totally coming on to him the entire time mm-hmm. it's creepy yeah, as but, fuck but Kayla's right it's because the, I mean in that town there are, are no other people so she'll fuck any dude that comes yeah. into town basically. oh no I, I totally agree with you yeah. absolutely yeah. but this it, is her it's ticket. so creepy yeah, yeah. she uh, stalks him uh, she raids his things yeah yeah. She goes through all of his personal belongings and finds yeah. his gun. 
and points it at her face. <laughs> yeah. First she, thing she does oh. with it. She holds it there for a no. while, too. She just kind of just holding it straight at her face. Oh, my God. Yeah, she's Stupid a, girl. And it's, I don't know, it's extra creepy to me because I feel like her dad is completely aware of it and is just like, eh. Like it's a cute quirk of hers. Yeah. Like, yeah, that's like, like his yeah, attitude. Li- <laughs> yeah, but Ronald, she likes you. Like, he just doesn't care. Mm-hmm. It's creepy. Maybe he's like someone. Hopefully, someone will marry my goddamn daughter and take her <laughs> away from her. <laughs> I can't true. get rid of her. That's, That's true. Probably it. It's like yeah. well, my daughter's of age, and there's no one here that I. Would my really daughter's like. of age. Yeah. <laughs> However, <laughs> she does most of the actual work for their like auto shop yeah, so like if she did leave, he'd kind of be fucked because he she well, did most and, of the work. And, well, and I think that's why he like kind of brings them on and is just like all right we'll work on your car and you can stay with us and do this i think he wants to bring him on maybe he's thinking like oh my son-in-law will take over the family business yes. <laughs> see like he's thinking yeah, that way too like, 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 yeah. you're all son playing in- the long game yeah. like, your son-in-law could be your older brother yeah exactly this is fucking weird Ugh, yeah. god gross yeah he's yeah. at least 50s there's no way he's younger he's, than oh 50. he's 50s absolutely yeah. 50s he's gotta be right yeah. look at that, that mug yeah. look at it yeah yeah He's it's a weathered. craggy, craggy that face. Wrinkled, yeah. crusty mug. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and he smokes like a chimney. Yeah. Everybody does in this movie. It's yeah. fantastic. Yeah. Um, so this brings Malone into conflict with Cliff Robertson. Uh, yeah. Sure. Who we may know from uh, movies like Escape from L.A. He was the president. But yeah. he played, uh, you remember, you ever, like when you're in high school, you had to read Flowers for Algernon? Yes. Oh, sure. Yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. He made a movie yeah. called Charlie. Really he played Charlie. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think that's what huh. he's most famous for. Really? I've never heard of yeah. it. They made yeah. us watch it I was gonna say, in I English don't... class. So by so by famous, you mean famous in your high school? No, I think like that became, I think it's he... the only adaptation probably, right? Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. And he may have won an Oscar or been nominated really? for that part. Oh, I really yeah. I mean, that's, a, that's an Oscar bait story if there ever was oh, one. Oh, it really like, is. That is the most really Oscar is. bait yeah. story ever. It I mean, really it's great. Is. I love it, but yeah. it is prime. Sad. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Really sad. <laughs> All right. So who who is Cliff Robertson in this film? Delaney. And he is. I don't know, Colin. <laughs> <laughs> you just watched the movie. I know. No, I, I gather he's he's a congressman. Was he a congressman? No. I know someone at the lunch. I don't. I don't. I know yeah. nothing about. Okay, this movie. so he's <laughs> he's a he's a, a gangster. He's well, a bad guy. He's I don't a, know. He's wa- know. we know he's wealthy. He's wealthy. He's, they he's say the he's one. Wealthy. He's the one buying up the town. Yep. For nefarious purposes, <laughs> which we're not clear. I on. don't understand. Yeah, I'm still trying to work this out. Okay, so like here's so what far, we know. he's just a dick real estate agent or like a dick investor, a real estate investor. Like that's really all it is so far. Yeah, he's buying all the yeah. parcels of land around uh, the the gas station who won't sell to him, of course, because yeah. that's how Which, it goes. At one point, they're like, "He offered you ten times what it's worth." I'm like. Why the fuck didn't you take it, yeah, you son of a bitch? Then you got that scene. You where and your gimpy leg and your weird ass daughter should have taken the money and run. Should have. Should have. Why didn't you? They kill uh, one of the other people who won't sell. Right? They run him off the road. There's right. a big scene, and the guy on like, a bike splatters and they all hit over the car. Yeah. And then at the at the funeral at the cem- the, the single cemetery up <laughs> on a we'll hill. Which we'll talk about the cemetery in a minute. <laughs> Uh, oh my the God. town, the homesteaders all say like, you know, if you're not selling, we're not going to sell We're not either. selling either. I'm sorry. I have to keep going Southern. It just feels right. <laughs> I know. Even though this is Oregon, feels like, yeah. uh, it, feels it right. sounds, it feels like a Western. I know. Well, I mean, you're in this valley. So all of the shots have mountains in the back. Every single shot has this like, you know, it's beautiful. It looks like uh, yeah. a tourism commercial yeah. half it's the time. Beautiful. Yeah. If you told me they got tax breaks to like film here, I bet. I'd guarantee it <laughs> just like you guys ever see one of those movies that's like produced by uh like the tours and board of canada you ever yes. seen those mm. those happen yeah. pretty frequently and wow canada does not get subtlety when it comes to doing those movies man no. yeah yikes yeah and now we'd have nice drone footage or something there's no helicopter shots in this or crane shots even yeah. to show off all this magnificent landscape they didn't they didn't need it though they just go up on, on know, a mountain yeah. and just look down it's yeah. beautiful there's that part right. where they're eating on the, they're eating that like dinner on that white tablecloth yeah. on like a mountain Inside eating, that is so out of place in this movie, like, like a picnic, but it's not a picnic because there's like fine china and like caviar, and <laughs> yeah. yeah, and well, because, on a white table called yeah. outside. Yeah. yeah, these are the bad guys, they stand out because all of them wear suits mm-hmm. in this yeah. town where clearly it's a working class town. Sure. These guys in suits, they're bad guys. Oh, it didn't, didn't just say at one point they started buying up the town, they thought he was going to reopen the mine, yeah, yeah. 
But so no, he had like other purposes. In tiny mind. mining town, yeah. Other purposes that we don't know. Michaela knows. No, no, I don't. <laughs> I'm retaining nothing okay. from this movie. Well, what do we? What do from the evidence that we we're going to crack this? Are we going to the end already? Because that's really the only time that they talk anything about it. I think we have to. Well, okay. Well, the first time that we see this guy, okay. Uh, he's he gets he gets a bunch of people over to his house. I'm trying to remember the first time we see him. He stands him. in front of a big American Well, the first flag. time we see him is when the hitman comes and he's like, "Did is it is it done? Oh, that's right. Yeah. Because he has somebody go to Los Angeles and assassinate and ki- a dude. A, like a guy in charge of a charity or something. And I still don't understand what that was about. I, do you? Knows. Nope. Oh, any, okay. any idea? Nope. I don't nothing. A hitman, I got nothing. A hitman that we had not seen before yep. walks into like a headquarters of like a charity and shoots the guy in charge. And I still don't know why. No Mr. Idea. Delaney has a delivery for you, or wants to make a donation. Yeah. Kapow, pow. Yeah. Then, <laughs> yeah. no cops, no nothing. No. He just kind of saunters out, wanders back yep. to home yeah. base. Did it go okay? Yeah. Yes, it did. <laughs> back to our main story now. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. And then he gets all of his cronies together, right? And they have, yeah. he gives them the speech, right? Where, that, he, like, uh, sw- where he swears them in, and he's standing in front of an American flag. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that the the <laughs> repeats the uh, it was the blood of uh, the blood of America the roots of oh God I can't remember it's famous you know has yeah. to be refreshed every once in a while but with the blood of patriots and mm-hmm. we're patriots and so we're gonna do this thing and you're like ooh what are they planning they're buying up all yeah. this land and uh, they have you know the devoted faithful. Right, yeah, who like are, secret so it's like, society or whatever. Yep, very culty. Yeah. yeah, right, but also wrapped in patriotism. Yeah. Somehow they're quote unquote saving the country. Yeah, he gives a speech at some point about that. He needs to recruit Malone. Yeah, for half the movie to join us, son. You got to come with us and you know have a purpose. Otherwise, you're a happen? masterless samurai. When did that happen? I think it was uh, Malone may have been in the jail cell because Malone. Oh, gotcha. When he quite when he like insisted to go in and question him. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, Malone's in jail because they send Tracy Walter in to shoot him while yeah. he's getting a shave in the barber shop. Yeah, Malone freaks him or fakes him out by saying, "I got a gun underneath this uh, here newspaper." Yeah. And shoots him with a revolver, and his back explodes. It's amazing. <laughs> explodes. Explodes. It Whole was back wonderful. Is just red redness <laughs> shooting out. It yeah. was unexpected and glorious. Yeah. Stop, Alexa. Uh, <laughs> she, she, she was talking about violence and was like, hey, let me in on that. Back explode, you say. Yeah. It is very uh, unexpectedly violent. All of a sudden and for a very for a split brief second. Yeah, for a split second. Before it saunters back into, yes, yeah. uh, hitches back into a lower gear so we can uh, try and decipher all this plot you know, <laughs> drama that's happening. The action sequences are the shortest parts of the movie. They're they a split second and then it's done. I don't count that end was barn chase. That, was that our big action scene? At I this think point it was. In the movie? Uh, well, at this point, yeah. I mean, a- after yeah. the guy gets run over, the guy on the on the yeah, I don't count that mountain as an bike or whatever gets hit sure. by a car. Well, it's a stunt. Uh, yeah, yeah. So this is the first action scene. There's it some is. tense. You know, it's like, is he going to go back yeah. in there? Because it's set up like a. I mean, it is like a western thing. Dudes yeah. out in the mm-hmm. s- street yeah. wanders in, like you know. Yeah, yeah. How you come offended? he didn't shove any saloon doors open once in this movie? I know they never go to the bar. I know. God damn it! It's a dry movie. Oh, wait, wait, it's probably a dry town. You know why Tracy Walter was there at the uh, the barber shop is because Malone, like, uh, basically made it so that their family line is not going to continue because he kicked his brother in the ball so hard. <laughs> <laughs> You remember this, no, right? No, keep going. I'm with well, you. I, of, of, the, I did not remember this until just now. <laughs> this is our first action scene, I think, because the uh, the truck full of yokels, right? Oh, I forgot about that. Old Malone's yeah. walking the daughter home. It's very, you know, uh, yeah. uh, touching. And the yokels pull up in their pickup truck and are, you know, making fun of them. And so, you know, Malone's like, you you don't want to do this. You, you better back off. <laughs> and uh, nope. Old uh, Henry or whatever the hell his name is. Yeah, from, Otis. Si- from Sidekicks and Con Air. Yeah, yeah, his name's in this thing. Yeah. Uh, he uh, picks a fight, gets his ass handed to him, 
gets his face like, what happened to that man's oh, face? It w- I don't know. It's like, it was, did his face hit the truck when he's... Yeah. So like, yeah, but that uh, smushed his whole face in, I guess? And he like, split like his nose and yeah. his blood gushing all over the place. Yeah. Yeah. It was excessive. It was, it was messy. <laughs> it seemed like it wasn't that violent of a fight for the outcome. No, it wasn't. Know? Well, it's that old, uh, you know, it's it's the John Wayne school of fighting mm-hmm. or the William Shatner school, right? Where mm-hmm. you can see the punches coming like way before. The oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. For an ex cop, an ex fucking CIA, ex sniper, ex whatever the fuck he is. He has no like fighting rhythm whatsoever. Yeah. None. Nope. Nope. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of disappointing. It looked like it yeah. looked like like nineteen forties. Put your dukes up boxing. Yeah, but less tough. <laughs> and it happened like so rarely in the movie that there was ever any actual oh yeah violence of any kind. Yeah. What is the appeal at this point of to you guys anyway? I mean, if you're trying to understand this, the appeal of Burt Reynolds, you know, as an actor. Like, what is he doing that, you know, you're thinking like, man, when people saw this, they were just like, this man's a force of nature. It, to well, me, it's kind of like Chuck Norris. I'm like, what, what is, where does it come from? Yeah, no, there's, there's a phenomenon in the 60s and 70s of, that I do not understand. Obviously, because I was born much later and we have very different mm-hmm. entertainment. But this is a dad movie. This is a movie my dad probably watched. <laughs> And if he hasn't, he would love it. <laughs> <laughs> if you like the John yeah. Wayne school, because yeah. I've also often wondered this about John Wayne. Oh, I know yeah. this is heresy no, to I say understand. this. No, it's the same I, type I, I of understand. movie, though. I grew, like, Yeah. I grew up with John Wayne, but watching him now, I understand. You do? I do. Okay, explain yeah. the John Wayne thing, and maybe we can apply this to uh, Burt Reynolds. John Wayne walks into a room. Yeah. And he's a movie star. Honestly, I think it's just the commanding presence. I think that's it. I does think Burt Reynolds have that commanding presence? I think he does. I don't think it has the same effect on us now, but I think he very much did back then. So you're saying it's what people were bringing into the theater with them more so than like what he actually does on screen. Because I was sitting there going like, this is... this." Is, does he do anything? No, like, he doesn't do anything. He's nope. not a good fighter. Nope. You know, no. it's very, it's Hollywood, old Hollywood stage fighting. He's mm-hmm. a lethargic personality. He is. And I mean, watching this uh, first, I mean, obviously it's, it's very obvious when there's a stunt, when there's a stunt man doing anything for him in this movie. But it's even like, if you watch him just like walking to the car or anything like that, he's He's got like the old man walk. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he does. You know what I mean? Yeah, he does. And it's like almost distracting where it's like, all right, this is not my action hero. Yeah. He's actually like, okay, this man is pushing 60 and he should not be doing this. For for me, it's I I he's always been such a thing. And for me, I grew up in a time where by the time I was a conscious adult, he was such like a caricature of what he once was. Sure, yeah. That like I'm not even sure I know like where it starts, you know? Yeah. Like when I grew up I knew him for the fucking bearskin rug picture. Yes, okay. and, oh, for, and for Saturday picture. Night Live. It was, it was Cosmopolitan. Was it Cosmo? I it thought it was Playgirl. Out, that's what I thought. It was Cosmopolitan. And for Saturday, being like parodied to death on Saturday Night Live. Like, yeah. that's all like that. So, like, Turd Ferguson. Yeah. Yeah. But, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. That's who technically yeah. it was called, but it's, it's fucking Burt Reynolds. Uh, but, and it was like, hilarious. It's yeah. still funny. And they, they still bring it back every once in a while. That is one of those things that will not die on Thank SNL. God. Yeah. That's funny. Yeah. It's, so like I like I said I don't even know where it starts or where it came right. from or what it was because I only know you know however many years later what it's evolved into yeah. so well yeah. stri- he strikes me as a guy like I mean from what I have been looking into you know, about him he seems like you know he was kind of like an aw shucks kind of guy who became you know, through hard diligent work a massive uh, you know movie star and then had such an ego about himself like i mean that's the thing that like burt reynolds reeks of ego Mm -hmm. yeah you know 
But I think like the ego is like protecting like a uh, kind of an insecurity. Like he seems yeah. extremely insecure also at the same time. I mean, that's, that's standard, you know, standard narcissism, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. total asshole, totally full of himself, but it's because they're insanely down on themselves. Yeah. I kind of feel like maybe he just like was one of those people that just failed upwards constantly, you know, that like he just, okay. he just got lucky and hit it at the right time and people were into it. Yeah. I mean. And that carried him quite a long yeah. way. Mm-hmm. I mean, after this, there was, uh, well, there was a series of films that he did around this time that basically, uh, there was one called Stick, which I think is based on a Elmer Leonard novel. There was one, uh, I'm blanking out, Heat was the one he did right before this, which was a William Goldman movie. I think William Goldman, who did Magic a couple mm-hmm. weeks ago, he uh, wrote it and maybe directed it. Or no, he didn't. He didn't direct it because uh, the story was. I'm remembering now. Burt Reynolds punched the director, which is a guy <laughs> named Dick Richards. He punched him. Dick so that Richards. Guy, Dick, Dick Richards. Huh? Dick Richards. Dick Richards. Yeah. Wow. That was Dick Richards. Yeah. It, he, a real Philip Phillips going on here. Yeah. I think Dick Richards did a movie when I was looking him up, and now I don't remember what it was. He did a movie that we've watched on the Saturday Night Freak Show in the past. But uh, Dick Richards was actually the second director on that movie. He quit. Another brought another guy on, and then Dick Richards came back, and it was something. So, And Dick Richards sued Burt Reynolds and ended up winning like $500,000. So Burt Reynolds said basically that punch cost him mm-hmm. 500K <laughs> yeah. to punch that guy. Yeah. Uh, but after, after this period, like he did TV stuff, like Evening yeah. Shade or whatever the hell. Right. Yeah, mm-hmm. he did a lot of stuff, and uh, you know he was nominated for an uh, for an Oscar for uh, Boogie Nights, and that kind of I think brought him back yeah. a little bit. Right, he did striptease yeah, too. He did, he did striptease. Yeah. Very very memorable in that movie. Holy very shit! Very memorable. Yeah, yeah, because I forgot about Boogie Nights. Yeah, striptease. striptease. Days with me. Yeah. yeah. You remember that Stallone movie he did, Driven? No. Oh yes. Mm-hmm. I forgot about that. Yeah. He was in a movie with Seth Green. I can't remember what it was called. It was like Without a Paddle or something Without like a that. Paddle, yeah. Yep. And actually, I, 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 w- I read an article. Uh, was it an article? Or it might have been. No, no, no. I'm sorry. It was right after Burt Reynolds died. Seth Green posted something on Instagram about his, his experiences filming that with him. And he was talking about how he was just the nicest, most down-to-earth guy like he's ever worked with. And he was just very... Um, like a like fatherly figure to all of them on the set, and he was just such a cool guy. And I think at that point later on in life, when he started doing movies again that that were more well known again, I think he had calmed down a little bit by then. Mm. Maybe the old age kicked in, and he was a little more wise, or whatever the situation. But yeah, I think I think later on he did become more of a chill person. He still got two movies coming out this year posthumously. Does he really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's dude's been working, not in great that, stuff, yeah. but he's been working. Well, it, was, yeah. it was the like the last. Um, it was called like the last movie star or something. It was a movie. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and there was some talk of like uh, you know the actor Bruce or uh, Burt Reynolds doing mm-hmm. this, you know, mm-hmm. acting <laughs> thing. Acting. Yeah, he's got two more though. Huh? Yeah, two more coming out: Defining uh, Moments and an Innocent Kiss. Wow. Well, huh. I remember uh, Seth Green was on a talk show. I think when the we're doing promotion for was it up, up without, the, a paddle. without a it's paddle, without a paddle, yeah. And he said that you know they're in the woods and mm-hmm. whatever. Burt Reynolds plays like this woodsy guy. I think yeah. that they meet, but he says you know they were sitting around killing time between you know takes or whatever. Yeah. And uh, Burt Reynolds said something about like getting dinner and he wandered into the woods and fucking shot a, <laughs> uh, a deer with a bow and arrow and came back with it or something and like and seth green was like and that's burt right that's crazy <laughs> like, whoa that's fucking crazy yeah he was just like a man's man <clears throat> yeah yeah um do you, yeah i don't, do you think it's the mustache is that what people like is it the mustache I and mean, he's got a look, you know, like you know? I was kind of thinking about like, you know, the the infamous like bearskin rug photo. Like yeah. we don't have people do stuff like that now. Yeah, but Not he really. regretted doing that. He Apparently did, he yeah. said that that was you know, he was in the height of his like, I can do anything. And he said he did it and then like immediately regretted it. And, he's, and he kept bringing it up. That, that was the one thing that he mm. regretted because he thought that. You know, a serious actor. Basically, mm-hmm. they they didn't take him seriously mm-hmm. after that. So he thinks uh, like his career could have gone one way, and basically, 
that but he was, was still working up until he died it's not mm-hmm. like he didn't not like he he was like untouchable you know like yeah, but yeah. he he felt pigeonholed as the guy behind the wheel of a car he's always going to be the action mm-hmm. dude where he wanted to do like light romantic comedies mm-hmm. or you know something some kind mm-hmm. of heavy dramatic stuff mm-hmm. and just couldn't get there mm-hmm. and then ended up doing like all these action movies in the 80s because that's what you know guys like him were doing mm-hmm. I feel like now you got to be like ripped to play any role as a dude for the most for a lot, yeah. a lot of movies, you got to be like fucking Chris Evans, Captain yeah. America, ripped yeah. to do most movies. If you want to be a leading man, you got to be ripped. Yeah. Otherwise, if you're like, otherwise you're gonna you're be a character the, actor. You're gonna be the the funny character actor. Yeah, the sidekick. You're yep. never gonna be the leading man. Yeah, and so like I don't know, like that period of time where you could be someone who looked like Burt Reynolds and then do a photo like that. Like I don't know, like I could. Could you imagine any of the Chris's doing anything like that now? Like it wouldn't happen. You know, it's. It was. I don't, I'm fascinated by the difference in time shift and how we view yeah. celebrity from then. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, to me, to me, Burt Reynolds is kind of on the same. He's kind of the same bar as um, Tom Selleck. Yeah. I don't really definitely. get it. I mean, I mean, Tom Selleck had like a hit TV show, so I guess I get that. Like that's more accessible, I think. You know, so I get it more in that sense. Uh, he you had know? Tom Selleck's got more charisma. Yeah, I think yeah. so. I think then Burt. I mean, a heart. No, I, you know, I, I, I by a I, little by this much. I, I, I agree <laughs> that he's a little more likable. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. But I just don't get the hype. All right, here's a question for you because I was actually thinking this while we were watching this movie. Yeah. I'm like, who should have been in this movie? Right? Yeah. You just watched Ten to Midnight. Mm-hmm. What do you think of Charles Bronson as Malone? I'd be down for that. Would uh, there be much of a difference? I no. Mean, <laughs> I mean, the movie would still suck. Well, because first, it's boring. If it was Charles Bronson, I wouldn't. I would be even more skeeved out by the little girl liking him. <laughs> At least Burt Reynolds is kind of like known as like a you know sexy guy. I don't yeah. personally see it, but he's known for that. Yeah, our, our moms would I, probably disagree. Yeah. I'm sure. <laughs> My mom would be like, "You're insane." My mom would say that too. I'm sure. I guarantee it. Well, was Bronson though? Was he a sex symbol? I, it doesn't feel like I no, was. no. I mean, he's too like, rough. He's I mean, too again, rough. Burt Reynolds was a god. Yeah. At, in the seventies. Yeah. And eighties. Yeah. But Bronson was the tough guy. And it, it's like Burt Reynolds wasn't a tough guy mm-hmm. in the movies, but then in the eighties, that's what he played. It was these tough guys. He cop, was just like this defining know. idea of masculinity more than anything, is what it seemed like. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, it's no surprise to you, listener, that Malone takes it upon himself for altruistic reasons Mm. to save the town, the gas station, and the gas station owner's daughter from the evil land baron, who is not a land baron. He's a patriot who's trying to... He's got a bunker, right? Yeah, the bunker. What the (laughs) fuck is the bunker? I don't understand. I don't either. it's It's like a war room. It, it, there's computers there's, everywhere there's and red computers. lights. It, yeah, there's it, there's. I feel like there's strategies you need happening. A key to get in there. Yeah, there's he, maps. He actually at one point lays it out for us, and I did not know what the fuck yeah, he was talking. He explains <laughs> his evil plan, and we're still like, what? Yeah, what's your evil plan? I don't understand. I think it might have been somewhat white supremacy. Kind Maybe. of. He says I don't something know. about like we're the pure race, and we're yes. gonna take the country back from the traitors. Yes. Okay, so we get that. We got it. So the way that they're going to do this okay. is uh, they're buying up a bunch of land and they've in got- In the middle of nowhere. In the middle of nowhere. Sure. And they've got uh, senators and congressmen in 46 states in their pocket. Eating nice lunches on mountaintops. Right. Yep. They're all in cahoots. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. You with me so far? All right. Yep. The next, with you. All right. The next uh, logical step in this is- okay. um, that's it. That's as far as that's, we got. That's, that's as far as we got. That's where it stops. I don't know. <laughs> like, I don't know. Is he going to blow something up? Is, 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 this some is kind he of like trying to be the Monopoly thing? man? Like he thinks that if he just buys everything, like eventually I'll own the whole fucking country. Yeah. What's is that his plan? Room for? I thought it was a bunker. Like this is where you have your, you're launching the missiles. <laughs> he wants to build hotels so he can charge people <laughs> yeah. to land on yeah. it in this random ass tiny mining right? town. I don't understand. It's very weird. It's, it's so just, weird. And also, I mean, we get to the point in the movie where, you know, he's going to help the town. He tries a little bit and then it's like he leaves. And I don't think he would have gone back to help the town had they not killed his girlfriend. I I don't know what she was. Yeah, because he uh, 
they do make an attempt on his life. They bring in the New New York hitmen yeah. to take care of him. And he uh, blows their backs out also. Oh, yeah, with a shotgun. <laughs> yeah, yeah that, that time it made sense. Yeah. It was a shotgun. <laughs> Fucking shotguns the shit out of him. Yeah. And uh, he takes one in the gut also. It comes yeah. out the back. I mean, he's like severely wounded. And yeah. then the hillbilly sheriff is like driving him, you know, like we don't have ambulances. We just throw you in the back of the car and then drive through the woods and, you know, yeah. over every uh, yeah. rock. Which he and- was doing on purpose because he was in the fucking mobster, whatever the hell he is. In, the in, in his pocket. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so that's why he was out of town. He had to go to mm-hmm. the, the hospital. Yeah. And then at some point there, his uh, it's another CIA agent who I thought was his handler because she shows up at the beginning. There, Lauren Hutton. So, so, so she's a CIA agent. She's an agent because she's tasked with slipping him a Mickey and killing him because he's but like gone rogue, right? Uh-huh. He left the agency because he couldn't kill that guy at the beginning of the in his sniper, right. The thing, right, 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 the oil executive yeah. or whatever. And so he's gone rogue and he's like, I want to quit. And so he just fucking left. So he shows up when the cops in uh, Carstark, whatever, uh, Oregon, Comstock, there was Comstock, Oregon. Yeah, I caught that. Is that it? Yeah. Oh, I have no idea. You can tell me whatever. Sure. <laughs> they, yeah. That's what it is. They ping the, you know, they're like, who is this guy? And they send a telex. Right. That goes I remember to Washington. that. Yeah. The CIA goes, we got to take him out. They activate Lauren Hutton. They send right, her. Right. Right there to kill him by yeah that's right because he was he was like he seems to like you or something like that yeah yeah but it turns out she really does like him yeah they're an item of some sort yeah he gets her she gets him out of the hospital by posing as a nurse yeah and they get all funky so you don't we- have to have the sex scene with the little girl thank god thank <laughs> god <laughs> lauren hutton fills that yeah uh, does that. although there's not an actual sex scene yeah just afterwards yeah, but we so do get that play. line that you mentioned earlier. I, I came here to kill you. It's fantastic. I know. And then then the bad guys kill her. <clears throat> yeah. She's a trained CIA, like, lethal assassin. Yeah. And these suit-wearing motherfuckers get the jump on her and kill her. This pisses Malone off. Yep. So you're right. Would he have come back? Well, he had to go get his car. Oh, true. He had to get his car. But I don't think he would have stuck around. Yeah, but now he's pissed. Now he's pissed. Now he's going to... Get his revenge. Yeah. So he goes to unleash all holy hell on Cliff Robertson and his uh, men at their yeah. uh, farm. But this felt like Roadhouse, too. Did you mention that? <laughs> Don't. Like, How dare you, Colin? But How doesn't dare Roadhouse you? have a similar stranger comes into town to clean it's up? It's 8,000 times more fun, though. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, all of the movies I think that we've mentioned so far yeah, yeah. are more fun. Roadhouse has a sense of humor about itself, at least. That's the that's the other thing I don't get about like the Burt Reynolds mystique, because part of I think what makes his character or his personality work in Smokey in the Smokey and the Bandit movies and that is that he can wink at the camera sometimes mm-hmm. like directly. But I mean it's kind of like a light, you know. Uh, yeah, he has a light touch to everything, but in this, it's like he's stone cold serious. It's mm-hmm. like, dude, you got this fucking helmet on your head. Mm-hmm. You walk yeah. like an old man. Yeah, you basically leave the last third of the movie so your stunt double can do all the work. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Why are you here? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like maybe he was just miserable, and he just looks miserable, and we're not having fun, and he's not having fun. <clears throat> <clears throat> yeah, I get. I feel like he just needed the work. I think, yeah. Maybe. And I, and I. This was not the yeah. movie to put him back on top. That's no, for damn. He's I, like, I need the work, oh, and my character doesn't even get to fuck this girl. Damn it! Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure I saw that they wanted like 12 other people to play this part until they went to Burt Reynolds. <laughs> I they can't imagine they read more than 20 pages into the script before they were like, when does this movie start? Yeah. Well, yeah. it was based on a novel called Shotgun by like, uh, what was that guy's name? William Wiki. I don't know. Uh, it's uh, it two uh, W's to say on the, we got credits there. On the William video Wingate. Box. William Wingate's yeah. epic novel, Shotgun. That was either a really boring book or they did not get the uh, essence of the book in this movie Mm. (laughs) one or the other yeah because the whole idea should be it's like these guys pick a fight with this guy and then find out like oh shit he's actually like this highly trained assassin right and we bought all this shit down on us i never get that feeling from these guys that they realize who they're dealing with just like huh he killed them too huh let's call somebody else in to go get him yeah 
I, I they kind of allude that the uh, the that Delaney understands who they're dealing with. I feel like they kind of allude to that, but I, no one else. Really well, he's does. always amused by it. Like, oh, he survived. Is he? And then there's a little bit of a smile on his face, like, huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You're probably right. I'm he did missing. that a couple of times. Yeah. At least twice. Every time like they boss, you got bad news. <laughs> Rick's dead. <laughs> he killed them both. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you're right. <clears throat> you're right. Yeah. Well, he Malone blasts his way through all those guys and then uh, kills Delaney off camera. Yeah, he I mean, that's that's the scene you're waiting for the whole movie is, you know, the big shootout when he kills all the bad guys and finally gets to the main bad guy. Yeah. <sighs> And it just falls short. Yeah, it was kind it's, of... It's it was, all anticlimactic. He's trying to be quick, quippy. You don't have the something to kill me. Wrong. And they didn't even show it. Yeah, I know. Yeah. They have a close-up of the gun. Yeah. But then he does, like, blow the fuck out of that building, though, so the bunker is gone. Right? Whatever their evil yes. plan is, is buried. The evil white blew it supremacy up. bunker is yeah. blown up. With and a, he walks with coolly away from beautiful it. beautiful you know? shot of the fire behind Burt Reynolds. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's glorious. It's yeah. too much effort to get to that point. Oh yeah, <laughs> absolutely. It's like, too much energy effort. Is draining it's just, out of us. We're talking. About. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well. How, okay. How long? No, seriously. How long was this movie? Because it felt. I'm gonna. Go it felt over. T- it felt over two hours. It was 92 minutes. No, it wasn't. No, it was not. No, no. You are. You are lying. I didn't print the Blu-ray case. It is 92 minutes. Oh, my wow. God. There was... Oh, wow. That was the wow. longest 92 minutes. Yeah. It was pretty long. Uh, that means they they had to, like, pad that shit out to make the 92 minutes. They had nothing to work with this. this. Nothing. Yeah, there was a lot of... Think of this, how long yeah. we saw him pushing the, his car in the oh, desert. There were there were, <laughs> <laughs> there were a lot of extended moments that should have been edited. And it feels like... But ironically, it also feels like there's a lot of the story was left out. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. They, yeah. they like dropped major things we should know for scenes like him pushing his car. Mm hmm. You know, it screams amateur filmmaker. Yeah. Yeah, it does. Well, what do you expect from the director of Battle Truck? Um, I mean, I don't know what to expect. I've never seen Did Battle Truck. Did he learn nothing from Empire? <laughs> yeah. Did he learn nothing? Yeah. He worked on arguably one of the greatest movies of all time yeah. and apparently absorbed nothing. How to tell people to go from here to here. Stand there. Yep. Say your line. Yep. Go over here. He directed the like stand ins for the lighting and stuff, Maybe. I'm sure. Yeah. 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 Is it, I feel like it's kind of ironic that like the the one liner in this movie is you know I came here to kill you. I know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's in the trailer. You should check it out. It's awesome. Did he steal that from Empire? <laughs> yeah. Did he? Yeah. That's my question. <laughs> Just to make him a badass. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. We're going to go around the room. We're going to tell you whether or not you should watch Malone. I think you probably have an idea of where this is going. But, listener, you, 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 never really, know. <laughs> you really don't know. Because as we have told you before, we've all sat here and suddenly, like, somebody says, you know, I hate this. I didn't like this. But this movie's, I would totally recommend it. So that could happen. We we surprise each other all the time. Yeah, I'm excited about mm-hmm. this. I don't know about you at home, but I am excited to hear what these two thought mm-hmm. about Malone. But first... We're going to answer some of your mail. And to do that, we need the assistance of our mailman, Igor. So, Igor, bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. He's got his wig helmet on. He does have his wig on. He's got a, he's got a bit of an old man walk himself. <laughs> I mean, who knows how old he is? You yeah, know? nobody knows. He, he probably is an old man. We would have old, to cut him in half. Whatever he is. I mean, he, he can grow his appendages back, right? So maybe we should try that sometime. Oh yes, cut off like cut off like oh, legs. He's, he's lab grown. Yeah, yeah. We, we, can, yeah. we can fix him. That's fine. We have the technology. <laughs> <laughs> we, he, we've got our own bunker. Yeah. <laughs> well. Uh, before we start reading about uh, tonight's movie and the other movies we watch, uh, Z- Josh Zemer writes in and says, uh, I regret to inform you 
because uh, we talked about on uh, was it last week? It was on the Train to Busan mm-hmm. episode. We mm-hmm. talked a little bit about Josh because he had written in. I think he suggested. Did he suggest Super Mario Brothers? I'm not sure now. But he says he, <laughs> he did not have any sexy netting when he was watching Super Mario Brothers the movie. If you remember oh yeah yeah yeah. Okay. yeah yeah okay. Uh, and we said uh, what were we talking? We talked about. He said that his dog every time the Igor comes around, his dog's ears would perk. Oh yeah, yeah that's okay. cute. Yeah. Well, he wants you to know that his dog's name is Pickles. <gasps> oh, my God. Pickles. Oh. There's more pictures in there. Pickles is so cute. Oh Pickles is a rescue mutt who has some <gasps> Sheltie in him. And here are some pictures. And just know that every Saturday morning when it's nice <gasps> outside, we go for a walk. And I listen to the new episode. So he's not only a fan of Igor, but also of the show because it supplies him with long walks. So he's Pavloved oh. to know that Saturday Night Freak Show means walkies. Yeah. I love the little NES oh, Jason so toy happy. that he has with him. Oh my God, he's a cute little oh, dog. Oh, he's the best yeah, boy. That's, that's Pickles. Yes. And I love that you named him Pickles. I wanted to name um, my dog Pickles if I ever got a dog. <laughs> the, oh, the NES Jason toy is so oh, cute. God. Love <laughs> it. <laughs> All right. That's so cute. The, oh. you, you guys can send us pictures of your dog. Yeah, 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 yeah. Send us pictures of your animals, please. <laughs> Cats and dogs. Well, both. he also wants to say, uh, Josh wants to say that he also loved Valentine. He says that movie's a lot of fun. And even though I got a prom night slash terror train vibe when it comes to the story, yeah. I still enjoy it whenever revisiting it. Watching it recently, though, I kind of forgot that literally every guy in this movie is a giant piece of shit. <laughs> He says all of the women could have done better. But thanks again for a great show. Take care and happy Valentine's Day. Oh, thank you so happy much. Happy Valentine's. That's awesome. So great. I totally agree with you. Thank you. Well, about tonight's movie, Malone. Yes. Novato Judoka. Johnny, New Jersey. He apparently watched the trailer after we said we were going to watch this movie. Sure, yeah. And he says, my God, this looks glorious. I must watch this now. It feels like Burt Reynolds saw Cobra and said to himself, I could do that. Seeing the Orion logo at the beginning of it makes me happy. Wall of Fame for Dennis Berkeley. Dennis Berkeley. Do we have we had Dennis Berkeley? Yeah, he's uh There the was guy, so many Wall of Famers. He in was the guy with the beard who gets his nuts broken. Yeah, right? mm-hmm. yeah. sidekicks and Connor. Yeah. Uh so there you go. Uh Sean Rogers says good old Turd Ferguson. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> See, that's that's there's a whole generation that oh, only yeah. knows him as like a meme, basically. Yep. Yeah. Well, apparently Grant Parrish points out that he was also the voice of Evie's father on Out of This World, but don't tell anyone he wanted to keep it a secret. Jeez, he does a lot of work and then and then walks it back by being like, Oh, I wish I didn't do that. Is that his yeah. thing? Is well, that I what he it does? Up. He actually did he was yeah. uh, he's credited. Yeah. Yeah, well, I don't know if he's credited, but huh. they say, yeah, yeah, he was the voice. I remember uh, he did a X-Files lot of voice acting episode, later on, like later day, maybe the last season of the X Files. He was mm-hmm. on. He played really? God because I mean, he's done a ton Star of voice Reynolds. acting. I was looking at his IMDb. I was surprised mm-hmm. how much, even he like up until he died, he was still yeah, doing it. Some, he had yeah, a lot of credits. Yeah. Credit. yeah, Saints Row. Fuck. You. Okay, if you're gonna do fucking Saints Row voice oh, acting, don't right. don't be all high and mighty about your choices uh, in life. Yeah. Well, he had to be uh, you know relevant to the kids. <laughs> Uh, about our movie that we watched Valentine last mm-hmm. week, Zombie Brando says, I'm so glad you're covering this one. It's probably an unpopular opinion, but I think Valentine deserves a seat at the table with the rest of the 90s meta horror, even though it came out a little after the boom. It got, it's got it got some really bonkers moments and a relatively unlikable cast, yeah. but there are some <laughs> inventive kills. I think the Cupid Killer looks great. I love the creepy theme by Don Davis, and it's got a revenge plot pulled straight out of almost any 80s slasher movie. It's generic sure but i definitely rank it above the sequels to last summer in urban legend and definitely above scream three or four you make good points sir. yeah you yeah that's what points. i'm saying man it's no hear, different than those other ones you'll hear a lot of that when you hear the episode yep uh let's see about our movie the train to busan mm-hmm. all right so this is my fault i posted a photo <clears throat> of the hero from Train to Busan, mm-hmm. like fending off zombies, yeah, <clears throat> and said that basically the you know he wasn't a quippy hero, and like send us your quips as some people. Oh did. yeah, yeah. But the girl with all the zombies <laughs> took us to task and it. says that the Train to Busan had three main heroes and one of them was quippy as fuck. How dare you overlook Ma Dong Suk as Song Hua? That would be Don, uh, Lee. Don Lee. Yeah. yeah. Well, no, we I was talking about him. Yeah. I know he was quippy. Right. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. 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 We love that guy. We, yeah, we, he's great. We yeah. got to see champion. If you're going to have to arm wrestling. If you listen to the episode, most of 
the episode is us talking about how much we love him. <laughs> yeah, so I want to deep dive his whole like filmography yeah. now. He's great. He's great. He's great. Uh, the Horrified Chicken Podcast. <laughs> oh my God, I love the name. I'm going to have to listen to that. Horrified Chicken Podcast writes in and says, I really enjoyed this movie. Fast Zombies would be worse in real life. Yeah. Than yeah. Slow Zombies. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Basin Voorhees makes a pun. Ha! Zombies have no soul. Ah, ah, ah that's a good one. Okay, that's a, that's a thinker, but it's a good one. That's good. Yeah. I like it. I dig it. Uh, Ryan Handsome Jansen says, I reckon this film is great fun. Yeah, it was yeah, great. Yeah, it was a good movie. I, I'm still thinking about that movie, you know? I'm still like, man, that was a really good You're movie. You're going to have to own a yeah, copy. Yeah, I am. I am. I will invest in it. I know. In that movie. I completely good. forgot we watched Valentine. I keep thinking about Train to <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, man, that was a great movie. Well, Mike Welch uh, doesn't share your penny. He says this movie was too long for me. Train to I mean, it could have been shorter. It's a long movie, but it doesn't, you don't lose interest. No, it like, moves. It yeah. moves. It's, yeah. it's a good paced movie. It's very good paced. There so. was a couple points where I was like, it's going to end now and it didn't. So I get why yeah. that might yeah, make yeah. you feel like it's too long. Is sure. if you, there, It felt like there was natural endings that they didn't take. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, that brings us to the most exciting moment on the podcast where we go around. Colin, what did you think <laughs> of... Malone. Uh, well, I mean, I can't say anything except that I'm colossally disappointed. Um, yeah. Yeah. I was expecting so much more. And I mean, I guess this is the, the thing. You know, it's like when you're looking at the uh, the Burt Reynolds oeuvre, uh, you, you're like, where do I jump in? I like how you looked at me for approval when you said that. The oeuvre. I don't know if it needs that much effort put into it. To it. The canon? What do you call it? Filmography? There yeah. we go. Uh, his body of work. Yeah, there you go. That's um, more, more I think more obviously you have to go with, uh, you know, you go to your uh, deliverances, your Smokey and the Bandits. If you're a sports fan, you go with like the Longest Yard. And you oh, watch yeah. the stunt Cop movies. and a half. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but nobody remembers Rent-A-Cop. Okay. No, don't. No, I don't. You're like correct. I do not fucking, remember. That. I actually do want to go back and like check out the White Lightning slash Gator uh, days. It's going to be more of the same. I know, I probably. Because know. I, I mean, nobody talks about like Burt Reynolds and White Lightning, but right. on the back of this uh, DVD case, they do. <laughs> yeah, because they own Kino is putting it out. So yeah, <laughs> check out our other title. Um, yeah, it's, uh, I mean, I appreciate that it's, uh, you know, it wants to be a Western. I think the biggest kick that I got out of the movie was probably all the recognizing all the faces of the character actors who pop up in it. You know, it's from that era where these guys worked and they worked all the time. And, you know, it's like every little part has a person that it's like, oh, that's that person from whatever, you know, um, I don't remember any like set piece or action that I would recommend that like you got to see this movie for. I don't get the appeal of uh, I think Burt Reynolds is playing against his strengths in this movie, right? He's probably better suited as a smart ass comedian with, you know, or something action guy. He's cuz he can do physical work, you know, stunt work, yeah. but with a uh, you know, let him loose because his personality that you know from outside of it, at least at that time, was you know, or being like the like later on in his career, like the sleazy, smarmy, rich guy kind of thing. But even then, yeah. in, in he's playing a bit of a co- comedic bit in uh, yeah. strip tease, you know. Yeah. I mean, it's more serious, I suppose, what he was doing in Boogie Nights that's more old man dramatic, yeah. Burt Reynolds. But at this point in time, Burt Reynolds is not an action hero. He is not a Sylvester Stallone. He's not a Charles Bronson. You know, he's not a Schwarzenegger or a Steven Seagal. I mean, that's basically the, the movies. I think at this point in action films started moving toward uh, more Kung Fu based, uh, you know, the Van Dams and the Seagals and the Jeff Speakmans. Anybody? Okay, never mind. That's the perfect <laughs> nope. weapon. And that's a discussion for another day. But um, yeah, the, uh, Don the Dragon Wills. Okay. Um, so I'm thinking, no, never mind. No, you're done. I'm done. Um, yeah, so it's, uh, and it's very like a flatly, you know, as we were talking, like, you know, you point a camera anywhere and it sees these awesome vistas that would look, you know, at home in any Western film. Uh, but it's shot so flat. Yeah. You know, it's like they're just like, well, if I point it that way, it looks, you know, good. But you're not like taking advantage of it. There's no inventive camera work. The direction's flat. The editing is flat. The story underdeveloped. The characters, 
Uh, you know, <laughs> the person who actually comes off the best as a performer is Cliff Robertson, because I like believed him, even though I didn't understand him. Mm-hmm. But I knew that he understood what he was doing. Yeah. <laughs> it just wasn't communicated to me. Yeah. Uh, as the viewer. Um, so, yeah. And I think, you know, I mean, if, I, if I'm sitting there going like I can name half a dozen movies uh, that do this exact plot and do it better. You know, and I'm looking at Shane and Pale Rider, number one. And then, you know, I mean, as we go down the list, right? Uh, Roadhouse. And um, then you can't recommend this one. You got to go. So go to those ones. You yeah. Know? So I'm still looking for the Burt Reynolds movie, uh, Burt Reynolds action film that I should see. Recommend it to me if yeah. you know it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I would say you can pass on this one. Michaela, mm-hmm. what'd you think? This movie moved at a fucking snail's pace, man. Mm-hmm. And, and like, which is fine as long as it's interesting and there's a good payoff at the end. Um, it, this doesn't have either. It's not interesting. Nope. It doesn't have a good payoff. It, everyone feels sluggish and lethargic and they don't want to be here. And it, like I said, this feels like a tourism board movie. Um, and it just, it, there's, there's nothing here. Oh, I mean, the trailer is great, but that, that's a, that's the best thing I can say about this movie is the trailer is great. It feels like no one's trying, especially Burt Reynolds. It does not feel like he is trying at all. Um, it's yeah wow what a letdown we were all so excited for this but sometimes this happens when you go in blind and no one's seen it before but i mean we're doing the work for you don't don't watch this one you yeah. let us take that on <laughs> there's you know there's plenty of other movies that we have watched for you guys that you should see so like watch Reynolds, those. we took this bullet for you yeah exactly <laughs> i i can't recommend it it just just no it's just it's really it was the longest 90 minute movie i've ever seen i cannot believe crushingly boring boring. it it, uh, like and not even is just the story moves slow but everyone physically moves slow and the story moves slow nothing ever happens at at even a normal pace yeah (laughs) it's all like half speed it seems like yeah don't don't watch this movie you're not you you can go the rest of your life without knowing anything more about this movie than what we've told you it's Mm -hmm. I the fact that it got a Blu-ray release kind of shocks me, but bit, yeah. it was sitting on a shelf somewhere, I guess. Right? Mm-hmm. So it's one of those things that gets picked up as a package deal, and they're putting yeah. it all out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Holly, what do you think? Uh, yeah, no, I we're all on the same page here. This is this movie moves at a glacial pace. It, the characters move at a glacial pace. It's boring as fuck. There's no payoff. There's there's nothing enjoyable about this movie. I mean, I still don't know what it's about. No, I still don't know what it's about. I still don't know. <laughs> Stranger comes to small Stop town, it. helps Stop out. But that's the... like the big scope. Yeah. Like, yeah, that's like the outline. That's what it's about. Yeah. No, you got to fill in that outline a little bit. We need more, man. And, you know, like, like we were talking earlier about, you know, Westerns and John Wayne. I said it while we were watching. I was like, this movie could be filmed in the 60s it could be set in the west and it could be john wayne and it would be exactly the same nothing else mm-hmm. would have needed to be changed i'm sure like, our parents would love this movie that's uh, my dad would like this movie yeah so well, does he want a copy of this movie no is he a blu-ray player <laughs> yes he does have a blu-ray player i bought it for him <laughs> i was gonna say wow moving on up because i don't think my parents have one no i bought it for him <laughs> um no, that, there's, You're there's. Like, Dad, you have to see this oh movie. My God. No, because no, because he'll make me watch it with him. Oh, uh, no, I'm not. I'm not pretty, doing it. Uh, and then it'll feel like a four hour long movie oh because God. you've already seen it. It'll be so bad. Yeah, there's there's nothing about this movie that I can recommend. I. Yeah, I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I feel you didn't know. No, you didn't. didn't. Know. It's not your fault, Holly. <laughs> it's not your fault. It's not your fault, son. <laughs> <sighs> No, nah, you guys don't watch this. Watch something else. I and I would love to be like, watch this Burt Reynolds movie, but I don't I don't really have anything right now. Mm-hmm. I'm not a big fan of Smoking the Bandit. Mm-hmm. You know what? I'm saying it. I don't like Burt Reynolds. Mm-hmm. I'm not a fan well, of Burt Reynolds. Yeah. But, take. but see, this is <laughs> yeah. the thing. That's I'm not either, but I'm thinking that's because I missed something. I did like did deliverance, we but not necessarily. Did for we him. miss something? I don't know if we did. Smoking the Bandit is a movie that has no fucking plot to it. You ever watch yeah. that movie? I don't that's know what that movie is. That's about. what I said. I don't like smoking. <laughs> Is, is that most of his like starring vehicles? Do they just not have plots? Well, I, I'm like, just saying is that a thing movies, of his movies? Yeah. Know, 
I guess. Yeah. No, I had a coworker today who was like, hey, you, what, your podcast, what are you watching tonight? And I was like, oh, we're watching a Burt Reynolds movie. And he went on for like five minutes about how great Smoking the Bandit was. And I just sat there because I'm like, I'm not going to argue with Because it's this a dude. personality and it's the racing stuff. Yeah. I, I mean, I get yes. it. I, the last time I watched it, I thought it was fun. But I was like, what? Did, what? Did, why does this? How does it, I can't even understand why some of the characters in that movie are doing things. Yeah, I and that's that's this movie. Yeah, I don't understand why the characters in this movie are doing anything that they're doing. It makes no sense. I don't like Burt Reynolds. I don't like this movie. <laughs> don't watch it. Watch anything else. Anything else. I don't know. Maybe yeah. next week's movie. Next week. What are we going to watch next week, Michaela? <laughs> All right. So next week. We're going to watch uh, what is widely considered to be one of the worst movies ever made. Oh, boy. oh fantastic. Oh, boy. Uh, we're going to watch the E.T. ripoff Mac and Me. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, my Mac God. Mac and Me. <laughs> oh. Why it's, do you have uh, to make us suffer? No, it's <laughs> it is uh, it's bad, but it is watchable as fuck. Okay. It, 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 you, I would encourage you guys to not look up anything about this movie because I want to witness your pure reactions have to a lot it, of the Colin? insanity. I have not seen it. I have not seen I've it. Oh, my it. God. You guys haven't seen it. No, I've, I've seen it. the box. God. my entire life the little alien yeah, that looks like E.T. Um, yeah. It is a wild ride. So just just go in blind as much as you ride. can. <laughs> That's what we've been promised now. Yeah, ride. you're going to see things that you're like, they put that in a movie. Wow. <laughs> we thought this was going to be a wild ride. It was not. <laughs> I've seen this movie two to three times, maybe. So. Whoa, you're a fan yeah. of Mac and me. <laughs> You'll see why. We'll get into it next week. Okay, all right, so that's uh, we're gonna keep you in suspense, right? Mac and me coming up on the next Saturday night freak show, ladies and germs. And until then, the basement is going dark. <laughs>